In this video, I'm going to show you how you can be able to take your spectrum developments onto the next level using this tool called Tracer AI, which is a simple extension that lives on your coding IDE and basically follows this three-step process to simply taking the project intent and break it down into different phases. And here you can see that I have a project that I'm going to demonstrate in this video and break it down into different phases. For each phase here, you can see it basically create a plan that the coding agent here is going to follow step by step. And once we create our plan, we can pass this plan into onto a coding agents like clock code, cursor, windsurf and so much more and once we have the coding agent complete the projects then we can also have the tracer here to verify the changes that it made so simply we can be able to follow this three-step process for phases planning review to be able to take our spec driven developments onto the next level which i'm about to show you in this video so with that being said if you're interested let's get into it all right so to follow on this video here you can see that this is the vs code landing page and to download vs code here you can see we can be able to download with different operating system so mine is mac i'm going to download with mac and here you can see that for trace here here we have the ability to integrate with all kinds of coding agents like the codex client so the one we're going to stick with is claw code because that's one of the popular coding models that we have with coding ai agents so here you can see that i navigated to vs code and this is the current projects that we have which is the eric tech website which is my personal website and i I want to improve this to be able to drive high conversion rate. So in this case, to download Tracer, um, I simply just click on the extensions and search for Tracers in the extensions. So after I have this, I just simply just download it. And here you can see there's a icon in the left side panel. And simply I'm just going to click on sign in with Tracer here. And after I sign in, this is what it looks like. So here you can see that we have prompted with three options. So here you can see that we have phases, which is basically having a clear conversation to define the intent on what we're trying to build, right? Trying to break the task or the plan into different phases. The other one is planning, where we're going to basically take the plan that we have originally and be able to refine it with AI and send it to the agent to execute. And the last one here is review. So let's say we have the AI agent make some changes in the code base and we want the tracer agents or AI here to review the code base, give feedbacks, and that's the option we're going to choose. So in this case, first thing first, what we're going to do is we're going to start with phases because here we have a requirement to basically just drive um, more conversions. So here you can see I have attached the index.html, which is this what it looks like for the current landing page, right? So if I open the index.html, this is the landing page, which is really plain HTML. There's no really functionality or anything. It doesn't really drive any conversions. And that's what we're trying to prove, right? It's going to create a new phase implementation plan for the professional personal websites. So this is the tech stack we're, we're trying to use. And then there are also the primary goals, which is to convert visitors into paying customers for both types of audience. And here's the deliverable needs, like the planning, the implementations, the conversion optimizations, and so much more, right? So these are deliverable requirements that we set for the prompts. So once we satisfy with this, then what we can do is we can be able to send to Tracer to be able to deliver or be able to create a different phases for this plan. So here, we're just going to send this here. So now you can see that the Tracer here has already done the planning, the research, and also the task breakdown. So here you can see that this is the reasoning. So I have explored the repository structure. So it looks through everything inside of my code base, like the you know documentations and basically my business context and also the index.html page, which is the page that I just shows you with the plain HTML, right? So if you were to look at the tracer here, you can see that it has gone ahead, look through all that, right? And it also has revealed or basically found out that the website needs to convert two distinct audience. So one that is basically B2B companies like entrepreneurs and business owners. And the other one is B2C, which is mostly for developers. And currently you can see it points out some issues that there are no uh, email capture mechanism. And it also looks at some MD file for the documentation that I have. Basically it mentioned the detailed recommendations for the conversion optimization, including the homepage, the service tiers, and also the email capture lead mechanisms. And also the technical part, like what are the things that we want to migrate from? In this case, we want to use NestJS, chassis and UI for libraries and the front end UI framework, as well as GitHub pages for hosting. So pretty much that's what it has done for the reasoning and doing the research. And we can also be able to expand the thinking mode to see exactly what have it done to do thinking, right? So analyze the strategic plan and also planning the, you know, NestJS migration, strategy alignments, and so much more. And now you can see that here is also the phase breakdown. So basically it break down the task task or the plan into different phases. Here you can see that these are the list of breakdowns we have. Like first, we're going to set up the projects and the design system foundations, like the color themes, um, you know, different libraries. So basically going to use the same 
you know, color that we have inside of the existing um, color themes. And then here we're gonna, you know, try to first migrate the current UI website designs onto Next.js, right? So try to clone it and, you know, for example, migrate the nav bar. And then what we're gonna do then for phase three is to try to optimize the current new website that we have, right? So we'll first clone it, then we're gonna optimize it with high conversion rate. So here you can see like adding a pricing for paid consultants or things like, you know, having a BTC uh, career coaching or, you know, different sections of that. And then later on, we're also gonna do the, or add a course marketing infrastructure. So we're gonna market, since we don't have a course yet, but we're gonna have a waiting list so that people can actually be able to sign up. And once the course is created, they can be able to get notified, right? So things like adding a course interest segment, maybe like a survey, right? Things like what they want to, you know, learn. And then there's also the phase five, which is GitHub pages deployment and production launch. So pretty much we break it down into five phases. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first phase. So here you can see that first phase is not started, right? So here you can see that we can always modify this phase or be able to add a new phase if we want to. So in this case to, you know, start this phase, we're just going to create a plan. So you notice here that this is basically a, you know, layout for the phase. It doesn't have a plan or it doesn't have like exactly a to-do list on how we're going to complete this phase so that's why we're going to create a plan for this so in this case we can also have the option to skip this page or skip this plan if you don't want to so here i'm just going to click on create a plan right so here you can see that in this case here is the prompts right which i have already generated and we're just going to create a plan based on this phase one right here so in this case here you can see the start to create the plan for this and let's take a look at it to see what it looks like after it generates. All right, so now you can see that it has generated the plan for this phase. So here we have the observations. So what it have observed based on, you know, what we have inputted, right? And then here is the approach. So how it's gonna do this, like using the Nest.js 14 and TypeScript, app router, chassis and UI to preserve the existing design and also try to set up the future conversion optimization features. Here are the key strategies. So that's the exact of things it's going to follow and then here you can see these are the things that it's going to do to list out each task it's going to do right so once we satisfy with this right once we look at this and say okay well it looks good uh, we can actually be able to execute this so there's a couple of ways that we can choose so for example we can use like claw code here we can use the copilot we can configure more um, so we're going to stick with claw code here so i'm just going to you know use claw code execute and then here you can see that it prompts us to see if we want to trust the files inside its folder. We're just going to say yes, proceed. And then here you can see that it basically pastes the prompts to this chat window to the clock code and it starts to basically execute. So in this case, let's wait for a bit. So you can see it's going to implement all the proposed file changes for phase one. And basically it's going to execute these tasks one by one. Awesome. So now you can see the clock code has complete everything for phase one. And we also have the ability to, you know, click on the verified. So people to verify the changes that it made. So if I were to click on verified, it's going to start to verify the changes that clock code has made, follow the plan for phase one. And here you can see that if we were to take a look at the summary here, here you can see that it basically mentioned that these are the files that have changed, right? So it creates the Nest.js 14. And these are the, the configuration files, the application structures, also the components and the documentations. So if I were to open my folder structures, you can see that this is what it looks like, right? So we have our app components, docs, which is what we have originally. This is the original index.html file. And then basically this is the readme file. You know, this is the Eric personal websites, which is basically what we're trying to achieve to target for B2C and B2B and also the tech stack and everything else. Okay, so pretty much we have everything looks good to go. So in this case, let's wait for a bit until Tracer has fully verified for the changes that it made for phase one. It seems like verification has complete. So overall phase one aligned well with the user intent, right? So everything else, and here you can see that verification comments. So these are has been labeled to four categories, critical, major, minor and outdated so here you can see that there are some things that are yellow which means it's major so typescript path uh, alias configured without base url can break module re uh, resolutions right there's also minor like the input utility missing border class my render border invisible pretty much three minor one major so what we can do is we can have claw code here to fix all the things that it has verified so here i'm just going to click on fix all and you can see the clock code here is start to, you know, fix these changes in a new terminal. All right, so it seems like all the changes has been fixed. So let's go back to the uh, tracer here and let's try to run the re-verify to see if there's any additional more changes. And while I was doing that, I'm also gonna run the yarn here to install the node package, node modules, since I don't see the node modules inside of this project. And then here you can see that after I have installed the node modules, this is what the application looks like. So you can see that it has listed out the phase one has completed 
And the next one is fix two, which is really cool. So in that case, I'm just gonna come back to VS Code and let's go to Tracer here and move on to the next phase. And I have also take a look at the verifications that there is no comments. So here I'm just gonna go back to the phase breakdown. So the phase one is completed, which is good. Verification is completed here. And we're just gonna complete, or in this case, move on to phase two. So here I'm just gonna go to phase two, create a plan, and basically try to repeat this process until we have all the phases are completed. All right, so now you can see that all phases have completed here. And now if I were to navigate to the application, here is what it looks like. So here you can see that I have run my application on localhost port 3000. And here is my landing page. And if we were to compare this to before of what it looks like, you can see that th there's definitely more stuff on this page, right? For example, getting the free templates, for example, like the career strategies is also listed here. And there's also different cards. Uh, if I wanna get the free automation templates, right? This is a gift, but in return, we're looking to get the audience to input their emails to capture the lead. And if you were to scroll down, there's also different sections for different type of audience, like career growth for developers, AI automation packages, career coaching packages, course coming soon, right? So things like that. And there's also frequent asked questions and personal projects, which is similar to what we have before, uh, but it's definitely there's more pricing and more calls to actions right on the page. And then here you can see there's also the dark mode as well, right? We, the links here are also working, right? Navigate to YouTube channel and be able to see my YouTube content, right? So things like that, we can be able to get all from this new landing page that we have developed. All right, so pretty much that's how we can be able to use Tracer here to build our application. And just to recap everything, basically we start with phases here, phases mode to basically start a conversation to clarify intents. So basically you can see that inside of our projects, we have divide our project into different phases. And for each phase here, we can use the plan mode here to basically convert the phase into an actual plan. So it's gonna take a look at the phase that we have, convert it into a list to do's that we're gonna execute for the coding agents. So here you can see that on the right, we can be able to execute in clock code, or we can also configure this with other coding agents or copilots and so much more. And then once we have the coding agent here complete the task for this entire plan, we can then be able to send it to the tracer here to verify the changes. So here you can see we have the verifications, review the changes based on our code base. And once we verify those changes, we will either get a list of comments for the feedbacks we're gonna apply, or we don't get anything at all. So for example, one of the phases here, like phase five, we have a list of feedbacks that we can be able to apply. We can simply just pass those comments or feedbacks to the large language model and be able to apply for those fix. So pretty much that's how we can be able to do this, right? Simply, we can be able to use the phases mode, divide our project in different phases and use the plan mode here to convert each phase into an actual plan for the agent to execute. And lastly, we also have the review mode where we can be able to review the changes that the AI agent has applied. So pretty much that's how we can be able to use Tracer here inside of our coding IDE. And if you do found out in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.